All right, welcome to our lesson on vectors. Uh, vectors are going to be very useful for us here in our statics unit in PoE, so we want get to get down some of the basics here. Let's start by talking about what a vector is. A vector is any measurement that has both a magnitude and a direction. Some examples of that would be a velocity uh, or an acceleration. Uh, but the one we care most about here in our statics unit is forces. Forces have both a magnitude, like how hard you push on something, but also the direction is really, really important for us. Um, so let's look at vectors a little bit here. Let's start by talking about the coordinate plane here. You see the x and y coordinates here. Um, to the right is our positive x direction, and to the left is the negative x direction. Vertically, uh, up is our positive y direction, and down is our negative y direction. That's going to be very important to us because the sign we attach to a vector indicates its direction. That's really, really, really critical when we get to solving trusses, and very, very common errors occur because people have the wrong sign. So be very careful of that. So let's talk about that really, very quickly. Let's say I have a force vector pointing this way, and it's got a magnitude of 6 pounds. When we use that in an equation, we're going to say that the force is positive six pounds because it's to the right. If we have a force that's downward with a magnitude of eight pounds, we would say that that is negative eight pounds because eight pounds in the downward or negative y direction. That'll make a little more sense to you once we uh, progress to this next slide here, but let me kind of set the stage here. What if we have a vector at some angle. It's not perfectly in the x direction like the first one we looked at. And it's not perfectly vertical like that one. If we have a force at some angle, we need to do some other work with that. And that's what the next slide is going to teach us. All right, one thing you will often have to do is take a uh, vector at some angle and break it down into its components. And what I mean by that uh, is the following. This vector, f, notice it's to the right and up. Uh, I'm going to break that down into the rightward piece and the upward piece. This is called its x component. It's in the x or horizontal direction. And this is called its y component. We're going to label those as f sub x and f sub y. And those are at right angles to each other. They are perpendicular. That makes us a nice right triangle. Um, and we'll, when we're given the magnitude of force F and the angle theta, we'll often want to figure out F's X component and F's Y component. So to do that, we just use simple trigonometry. Uh, in reference to this angle theta, this is your hypotenuse. The side directly across or opposite from theta is your opposite side and the side right next to or adjacent to angle theta is your adjacent side. So I'm going to label those to help us out with this a little bit. And then up here I'm going to write um, or minus of our little mnemonic SOKATOA which helps us remember our three basic trig functions of sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. We're going to use that to determine fx and fy in terms of our given values f and theta. So, let's get to it. Uh, if I want to find fx, um, I'm looking for the adjacent side, and I already know the hypotenuse, that's f, which trig function has a and h in it. I look up here and I notice that's the cosine trig function. So, cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And I'm going to substitute in my values here. The adjacent side is called fx. So I'm going to put fx right up here. And the hypotenuse, that is f. So I'm going to substitute fx here and f there. So the cosine of theta equals fx. That's the adjacent side over f, the hypotenuse. Now remember, my goal is to solve for fx. So I'm going to multiply both sides by f to cancel out that f that's in the denominator spot. Bye bye. And that leaves me with fx equals f times the cosine of theta. 
that's a really handy little shortcut for us to find fx. All right, now the next thing we want to do is find fy in terms of f and theta. So we're going to use trigonometry again. If I want to find fy, that's the opposite side, and I know f, the hypotenuse, I need to pick the trig function that has o and h in it. Which one's that? You got it. That's the sine trig function. So let's write that out over here. Sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. And I'm going to substitute in. The opposite is called fy, and the hypotenuse is called f. So let's plug those in right over here. Sine of theta equals the opposite is fy. Hypotenuse is f. Remember, our goal is to solve for fy, so let's multiply by that f to get it off the bottom. If we do it on the right, we have to go on the left. See ya. And that leaves us with fy equals f times the sine of theta. Solve for fy in terms of f and theta. Those are the two really nice handy little shortcuts to break a vector into its components if we know f and theta. Write those in your notes, but I want you to make a notice. This is really important. Uh, you can only use these shortcuts if theta is measured to the horizontal as is shown in this picture above. I'll show what I mean there. If angle theta is measured from your vector down to the horizontal, you can use the fx and fy shortcuts I've shown you here. If your angle theta is measured from the vector up to the perpendicular, I'm sorry, up to the vertical axis, then you cannot use these two shortcuts. You just have to use normal trigonometry to do that. Actually, what I would do is if they give me this angle, I would solve for this angle and then use those two shortcuts. There you go. Quick little shortcut for you. All right, now let's give this a shot. Let's apply what we just learned to a real example here. I've got a 40 Newton force directed at an angle of 25 degrees above the horizontal in the direction shown in the picture above. I want to break that down into its x and y components. So there's f's x component and there's f's y component. And again, they're at right angles to each other. And what do you notice about fx? You notice it's pointing to the left. So that tells me before I even start that my fx value should be a negative value. And my fy is pointing upward, so fy should end up being positive. That's correct. Now we have to pay attention to that. Um, using the shortcut, those won't put the negatives on when they should. We need to be aware of when they should be negative and add that to our final answer when we're done. Let's give it a shot. Let's solve for fx and fy. If I want to find fx, first of all I check to make sure my angle theta is measured to the horizontal, which it is, so I can use that shortcut. So fx equals f times the cosine of theta. Substituting our values, fx is f was 40 newtons, and theta is 25 degrees. Make sure your calculator's in degrees, punch that in, and you find out that fx is 36.25 newtons. But, remember, fx is pointing to the left, so we need to remember to put a negative on here to denote the direction of fx. Now that I've found that, I'm going to go back up here and add that to my sketch, just to remind me, oh, run out of room, there's Newtons. Alright, so we've got fx. Now let's solve for fy. fy equals f times the sine of theta, there's our shortcut. And substitute our values, Fy equals force F is 40 newtons times the sine of theta is 25. 40 times the sine of 25, punch that in your calculator and you get a value of 16.90 newtons. And I check my direction and it's pointing upward, so it's positive. Uh, so that is that answer there. Adding that to my picture here, 16.9, whoops. Kind of hard to write here. 16.9 uh, newtons. Uh, I double check my directions. Fx is pointing to the left, so it should be negative. It is. Fy is pointing up. It should be positive, and it is. I'm feeling very confident with my answer. That's how you break a vector down into its x and y components. All right, now it's your turn. Uh, do this as a self-assessment. See how you do. You've seen me do an example. 
uh, you give it a shot. You have 70 pounds directed at 58 degrees below the horizontal as shown to the right. Break that down into its X and Y components. Pause the video now, calculate that, and then go to the next part of the video and check it out. See how you did. Did you pause it yet? If not, pause it now. Try it out. Answer is going to show up in just a moment here. Pause that video and try it. All right, here's the results. Uh, since that 70 pounds is directed rightward and downward, your FX comes out to be a positive number because it's in the rightward direction. It's 37.1 pounds. Uh, F's Y component is pointing downward, so make sure you put that negative on there to show that it's downward. Very common error is leaving that off and just getting 59.36 pounds from the shortcut and not putting that in there. When we get to trusses, it's going to be so critical that you have those signs correct. There you go. If you need to rewatch it, then go ahead and look back.